The hits just keep on coming with more snow and ice expected. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about the next round of winter weather on the way through the weekend into next week. And we're also going to look long range. We talked in our last couple of videos that there would be six storms in two weeks. We're on storm number two, three, four, five, and six. Still look like they're going to be out there in the future. We'll talk about how much potential snow and ice are coming with those storms as well. Before we get into the video, I do want to thank you guys a ton for posting your storm reports in the comment section of these videos. If you did pick up snow this week, I would love to know how much snow you measured. Post that in the comments. Again, this is the best weather team on YouTube. You guys are a part of that by posting your storm reports. That's super helpful to us. So please, if you're new to these videos, if you're new to this channel, we'd love to have you on board and join the best weather team on YouTube. Post, uh, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. And again, hit that subscribe button. We would appreciate that. If you're enjoying this content, do me a favor. Please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. So here we go. Saturday morning, this is where we pick up our next system. There's this upper level jet stream, this uh, jet stream working through the northern tier of the country. It's an unusual setup because we're not really going to get I don't think anyway, the big one, but there's going to be multiple light to moderate snowfalls to really account for all of the snow that's coming. We'll take a look at the amounts in just one second, but picking this up on Saturday morning uh, through the Twin Cities, uh, southern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, we have some light to moderate snow going on. Here, by the way, is the, uh, the legend. Again, the darker the blues, and once we get into the pinks, that's the heavier snow, and then more of that orange and brown color is the mix. Uh, the green going to red, that's going to be rainfall that's going to be on the heavier side as well. So that's going to be uh, Saturday morning. If you're waking up and watching this on Saturday morning or Friday night, there's 4 o'clock into the afternoon. And this is where we get the potential for some slightly bigger snowfall in the northeast because we have two distinct systems. We have system number one that's going to bring some snow to parts of northern Wisconsin, the northern half of Michigan. And then we have this guy right here that's going to bring some rain and a wintry mix to parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and a wintry mix to southern Michigan, maybe getting up into Detroit as well, uh, some junk uh, developing towards D.C. and New York City. But watch what happens as we move into Saturday night and then eventually Sunday morning. The two kind of combine, and that's going to help to get some heavier precip going. And you see we get that darker blue color to show up, especially in parts of uh, New York and then really towards Massachusetts and then offshore uh, off the eastern seaboard. So we get a slightly more oomph into this system to get the snowfall rates a little bit heavier. Therefore, we can pick up a little more snow again. That's going to be early in the morning on Sunday. That's 1 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. And in terms of that snowfall potential, again, we get this surface air, the surface low pressure to develop once it really works its way off of the eastern seaboard into the Atlantic Ocean. And you see that white shaded color really from Buffalo, most of New York, the extreme uh, parts of northeast Pennsylvania, uh, really the northern half of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and then most of Massachusetts and then up into Maine, that is going to be our best snowfall potential as we move into Saturday night and then through the day on Sunday because we have the combination of those two weak storms and because we have that strengthening area of low pressure as it moves out into the Atlantic, we get some of that snow to develop on the backside. That is where it's going to be cold enough. In terms of how much snow we get from late Friday and then into the weekend, this is the latest high-resolution model. Uh, pushing the snowfall amounts and we'll go um, kind of state by state here so bear with me and then we'll take a long uh, longer range look at what we're going to be potentially dealing with down the line in just one second uh, taking the dabber back out this is where we kind of go state by state I, I think the high resolution model might be a little aggressive um, guidance as a, as a whole at least in Minnesota and, and parts of Wisconsin six inches might be a little bit too much although the snow ratios are likely going to be pretty healthy more of that light fluffy powder stuff rather than the cement snow so we could have some pretty high snowfall ratios coming out of south dakota i think a general three to six inches of snow is going to be possible from the twin cities through st cloud uh duluth fargo back to bismarck as well that's what i would say three to six inches of snow that would continue towards the green bay area even a potential for a little bit more i think 10 inches might be aggressive from the model in green bay Nonetheless, I think uh, we'll have a decent snowstorm out of the deal. That's going to continue to work its way across uh, the northern part of Michigan. Again, I think maybe four to eight inches of snow uh, towards northern Michigan. And then this is where we start to get in on some of the, relatively speaking, 
higher totals where you see the purples and then really pinks uh, starting to show up, maybe some lake enhancement there. I think a foot might be a little aggressive. Again, I, I think this is the high resolution model. So uh, sometimes it does run a little hot. So that's why I want to be clear about that. But uh, some of the purples here, I think, again, in general, four to eight inches with isolated higher from about uh, just inland, of, just to the west of Portland, Maine, back towards Utica into Syracuse, Boston, picking up an additional three to six inches of snow, if not even a little bit more. I mentioned in a couple of videos ago that I do think uh, this area here will draw a line, kind of the Pennsylvania, New York state line, and then north. That's going to be game on for a ridiculous second half of winter. It's a little more hazy uh, down into this area, but we could be included in that. I mentioned before that we're going to have to take this as a storm by storm basis because it is kind of a weird setup. We'll talk about uh, why that is when we look at the jet stream coming up in just a couple of minutes, but there's the snowfall forecast again, some light snow expected one to three inches towards Scranton, towards the northern portions of Pennsylvania, and then maybe up to an inch towards uh, central PA State College and whatnot there with this secondary system. I do think the biggest one of the bunch that we'll take a look at is coming towards Valentine. Day, so stick around for that. Here, if you're with me, by the way, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. Going out to the west now for our friends in parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. This is where we're going to be dealing with a little bit of snow on Sunday, especially in the mountains. And again, it's not crazy. We're not talking about a bona fide storm or anything like that, but we do have that snow potential there. Again, you see the legend. That's going to indicate where we have a chance of snow. And that's because we do have this upper level system, the jet stream kind of diving in uh, right into parts of the Intermountain West, Northern Plains. And that is going to help to generate snow, especially in the mountains of Montana and Idaho. And then also, again, in the Rockies, as we do have the wind coming in out of the west like that. So if you are going to be in the mountains this weekend, especially on Sunday, likely going to have uh, some opportunities for some snow there. Again, just watch your driving. Again, even if you're in western Nebraska, could pop off a little bit of snow going in there uh, through the morning hours and then also continuing into the evening. Um Storm track shifts north just a little bit there, and you see the snow potential certainly lessens. That light blue that was already pretty light um, moves back up, really holding to the mountains on Sunday evening with that system. Now, with that jet stream kind of sinking down to the south, uh, if you're watching from any of these areas, and let me know if you are, it is going to be quite cold again. This is a very, very weird setup on how it's so cold in the north. It's not really weird. This does happen, especially in a La Nina year, which we are. Um, but it's really, really frigid in the upper Midwest and northern plains. And I'll show you coming up in just one second that it is going to be super, super warm in the south. If you're watching from Texas into Florida, the Gulf Coast, it's crazy. Had a, uh, a viewer post in the comments that it was 88 in parts of Texas uh, earlier on Friday. Just wild. But with the polar jet stream kind of working its way like this in west to east, the cold bottled up in the northern tier of the country. So that is where we are really going to be watching for uh, the brutal cold. Before we get into the heat side, I do want to transition back to the active storm pattern. So I have the European model come up, and we're going to go back to the other weather computer now. And we're going to pick this up on late on February 10th into February 11th. And then, by the way, that's my old telestration right there. Um, there is the timestamp up top. So that is going to be uh, 3Z on the 11th. So that's going to be late into the evening on Monday, the 10th of February. We have our next kind of system already brewing. And again, it's coming in pieces as these things normally do. But still the jet stream, there's that big chunk of high pressure that's going to cool us down, by the way. The jet stream still working like this. Typically, to get a really big storm, you want the jet stream to be really wavy, either like that uh, for you know, one of these big Colorado lows to work up and blast the upper Midwest, or you want it more like that with that Boise Ridge right there to have the energy work its way down and then the surface low form. And then that blasts that area, neither of which are happening right now, but we do have what we call overrunning going on. So the big time cold to the North, we have the warmth kind of surging in from the South that's forcing up all of this precip, and it is cold enough right along that boundary on the northern side to produce the wintry mix and snow. So watch what happens as we go forward in time. Again, this is late Monday the 10th 
there are the two pieces coming together, just so widespread preset and getting going. Then we're going to take this out into the future, uh, see it kind of strung out a little bit. That's where we have that convergence from the warmth coming up from the south, the cold coming down from the north, and then here comes our storm developing right through here. I think this has the potential to be the biggest one um, of the bunch, relatively speaking anyway, for parts of the northeast. Now, with that said about it not being a... Uh, a prime setup for the big snowstorm. We do have a high pressure cell right here in parts uh, north of New York State into parts of Southeast Canada. So right there, that's going to help to keep the cold in place. We have a weak low developing right here. That's that little closed donut hole. That is going to continue to work its way in that direction. And as long as that continues to look like it's going to force out and there's going to be enough cold uh, really for a lot of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, especially Southeast PA, and Long Island to get on some snow, and then all the way up to Boston. That would be the corridor of the heaviest snow. Still a ways out there. There's still going to be that fine line between rain and snow, as there typically is. Um, but there's an opportunity for, again, some decent snow coming to places like Boston, New York City, uh, eastern Pennsylvania as well. So that was storm number, what, three? And then right on the heels of that, there's storm number four, a little bit stronger of a low. That's the one thing you don't oftentimes want. The main ingredient you need as I go on a little tangent here is the cold. You don't want too strong of a low because when you do that, you really have that warmth surging up to force the cold air back up north, especially when we don't have a ton of Blocking, that's a story for another time. It gets really, really uh, sciencey and meteorology, uh, meteorological. But there's our low kind of hopping across the south or the northeast th from the mid-Atlantic south of New York City. There's that mix line creeping up into Boston. And then there's some really heavy snow here. And again, this is going to be the 13th. So we have potentially two more storms beyond this upcoming weekend coming on uh, prior to Valentine's Day. So this is going to be active. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago um, on our channel as well. And then it kind of rides up and then blasts Maine. Again, all of these getting this far out into the future without a week, these are kind of subject to the little nuances. But I just want to show you how active this is. Another big atmospheric river event sliding across the west and then working its way across. And then look at that behemoth. That's a big interior runner. So that would not be good for uh, the I-95 corridor, but it would give a lot of inland snow. And again, once you're getting out to this far into the future, it becomes a little more hazy. But I showed this the other day, and I want to show this again. This is going to be the snowfall potential for uh, through February 14th. And don't want you really paying attention too much to the color table because it's not going to be gospel of what falls here. I just want to show this to you on where the active stretch is going to potentially be. We need some snow to be made up in this area, and it looks like we might get it. Again, That would, the purple stripe represents six inches, so it would likely be under that because, again, remember, we're – typically dealing in this setup with kind of um, the quality or the quantity versus quality here. It's still going to be a decent snow as he's come on through. However, I don't think we're talking about a foot, 18 inches at a time, especially in uh, the Midwest with these, with the jet stream staying progressive and working its way from West to East like that. We just get these little disturbances hung up in the jet stream, but it looks like we're going to get some snow here. We'll have the potential for snow maybe as uh, far South as the Arkansas Missouri line. Again, that's all yet to be determined. So the point I want to make with that is active pattern ahead. That looks like it is going to continue. All right. And lastly, just want to talk about this. We're going to go back to the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday I have to switch the weather computers again. My bad. Um, and this is what we're really looking with. Uh, this is going to be on Saturday. Again, the big-time warmth. I mean, borderline heat. We're pushing 90 degrees in spots. Look at that around Houston. Um, back towards San Antonio, 89, 85 in Houston. Uh, getting toward Orlando, back to the mid-80s. Um, Louisiana into the lower 80s. Tennessee into the low to mid-70s. I mean, we're running about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Remember, it was just three weeks ago that we had ridiculous snow in that area. I mean, that's long gone, but we've com completely flipped the switch. We're in that La Nina pattern now that's going to keep the cold bottled up to the northern tier of the country and then the warmth 
suppressed down into the south. And then again, as long as we have that, we'll continue to keep that super active west to east stretch rolling. But here is this system that's going to bring the snow to places like uh, northern Pennsylvania into the northeast that we looked at earlier in the video. Um, that's the cold front there that kind of brings the chill back to the nation's midsection and really gets fended off from the big ridge to the south. You see those orange arrows there. High pressure is residing out here, and that's going to continue to force everything up. All righty, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, big weekend. It's Super Bowl weekend. So if you're getting snow, enjoy the big game with uh, some snow coming down in parts of the northeast. That's cool. Um, stay warm in the upper Midwest and northern plains. It's going to be pretty cold, and you're going to need AC if you're attending the Super Bowl. Um, if you're hanging out outside the uh, arena at the Dome in New Orleans, it's going to be quite warm. Temperatures hanging around 80 uh, or so degrees over the next couple of days. If you found this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and consider hitting that subscribe button. We would love to have you on board the best weather community on YouTube. I said it. All righty, guys. Enjoy the weekend. We will catch you next week. Have a great day.